call the meeting to order and do roll call on the members and the staff. Tyler Bradbury. Absent. Cater Daly. Here. Melissa Hartman. Here. Fred Miller. Here. Tom Patterson. Here. Sharon, is it, is it Stetter? Stetter? Yeah, yeah, thank you. I could, I, if I did this, I could read it there. Yes. Here, uh, Ken Budge, Council Liaison. Here. Emmanuel Stewart, Staff Liaison. Here. And Javier Rodriguez, Code Enforcement Building Inspector. Here. Okay. Agenda item one. Uh, the first thing we're uh, I'm going to read what the agenda item is for tonight. Um, the applicant is Andrew Anderson. The location is 402 Biggs Avenue, Bisbee, Arizona. He's requesting a variance um, to construct a steel carport that exceeds the allowed distance from the property line. So first item of business, I'm going to open the public hearing. Is there anybody here to speak on, on this item? Do I stand up and do this? If you could go up there and introduce yourself, that would be fabulous. Awesome. Hello, my name is Andrew Anderson. Uh, I'm just, this is my first time doing this, so patient with me, please. But, uh, but yeah, basically we're just trying to build a carport that's close to the property line. Uh, as you can see in the photo, I don't know if you all can see that photo of the, the kind of the, the paint, little sketch of what I put together there. So that concrete wall, that vertical concrete wall there is the basically the property line. So we're going to be coming off of that about uh, roughly around like six inches. So that concrete wall at South Peak, the client owns the outside of that concrete wall. So it's going to be roughly like six to nine inches uh, total that what we're doing. Um, you can see that other uh, shed right next to there, that other steel uh, structure right beside it. And then if you drive up and down Briggs Avenue, there's a lot, there's like six within like 200 uh, yards distance down Briggs, there's like about six others sheds that are just right up to the property line as well. I know that's not an excuse to allow us to do this. I'm just, it's, I would more understand if it was like something that's never been done before, but it's something that's definitely very uh, common to happen on this, especially on this street, you can see. Um, this particular client, you really would like to have it on that side of the street. If you look at the Google Maps images to the right, you can see that he already parks his vehicle there to, to begin with. And if he would just really like something to cover, uh, to be some cover uh, over it. It's not like we're putting a garage door in front of it or nothing like that or any closed doors. It's going to be open on both sides. Actually, all three sides will be open other than um, uh, all three wall sides will be open other than that one dividing the, the two properties and then also the ceiling as well. It's going to have that curved look to it. Um, as far as the materials we're going to be using, if there is a, a concern about being too close to the property and fire hazard, things like that, they say, for example, a fire started on Mark's property. Uh, it can now transfer over and we don't want that, uh, whatever building materials we're building out of, be able to conduct more fire and then transfer it over to the next property. And so with that, obviously we still are building out of steel, but steel is still not a fire, believe it or not, still is not a fire rated material. That doesn't withstand, uh, it's like sheet metal will not hold back fire for an hour, they, uh, they claim. And so what another option that we could do is gypsum board. And so if you look, scroll down a little bit more, there's a couple other options too. There's like a paint you could put on the steel as well. Um, and that also would give that sheet metal a fire rated as well to, to the factory standard. Um, that's, that's a benefit there that we could do if people would rather do paint. But this material is just a really great material. It's an exterior gypsum board. Uh, I obviously wouldn't want to do an uh, interior gypsum board because it would just brittle away with the rain. But this is an exterior grade gypsum board and it's, uh, it has all its specs. I uh, called Kevin, the, the fire warden in Bisbee. And talk to him. I sent him all the info on this. He likes it. He thinks it'd be a great product to use. Uh, it's exterior grade, like I said, so it can handle rain and things like that. And we'd be putting that in between, uh, basically the, the the sheathing, the metal sheathing, and uh, the studs to the steel uh, is for the for the wall that we're doing. Basically, that that two inch uh, galvanized pipe that would be doing. And so that basically gives us well, stated in here for his per our information only. Type X gypsum board that is 5 eighths is considered one hour fire rated when applied to both sides of the studs. Walls must not have openings or gaps to ensure the protection of the post Kevin's statement on the last part. Thank you. Are there any comments from members of the staff? 
I can see none. Are there any comments by persons opposed to uh, this variant, granting this variant? I'd like to, I might make a quick comment. Of course. Um, Please set, tell us. That, we don't have the fire chief here, but <clears throat> as part of fighting a fire when you don't have any access to the sides of both buildings, that's one reason for the five foot. It's not only that it can transfer fire from building to building, but also your ability to, to get down and, and, and be able to contact all four sides of the building. So this would not allow any, uh, our department to be able to do anything on the left side of the building because it, it goes to the wall. So that's one of the considerations I would look at. When I looked at it, I thought, eh, if you had to pull a hose down that side to fight a fire on, for that building or the one next door, you would be completely stopped because you have a, a canopy over the top of you. So that's something to consider. Thank you, sir. You wouldn't be able to plug this people. Can we hold the comments yes, real quickly and then, then we'll get to where we can all. Okay. I think we all, no, we all have questions, so. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, is there a rebuttal by the applicant? Do you have anything else you need to come up and say to us? Um, yeah, I could just throw in a couple things here. So with this particular Gibson board, um, if you look at the rating on it, as far as, I think I'm going to have a hold on there. Yeah, this, this one, this Yeah, yeah. top one. Let's see if it does say it on here. Maybe it doesn't say on this particular page. If not, then I should have. With this one? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to see. I thought I put it in here, but I guess I did not. So this one, if you look into the specs of this particular one, for, uh, Kevin, you're saying that Kevin had put in there something about how it needs to be on both sides of the studs. Uh, that's, that's interesting that was mentioned. I don't, uh, I don't know when he mentioned that to you versus when he talked to me on the phone. But uh, I just wanted to make sure that nobody thought I was lying or nothing like that on that. That's, that's when I was talking with him, I was under the impression that we could have it on one side. Also, if you look at the specs on this, if you look at this particular product itself, mm -hmm. uh, this one does say that it's fire rated, uh, just it, just one sheet by itself. Mm -hmm. I'm not against doing it on both sides, not at all. I'm, I'm truly not. It doesn't change much to me. It just adds a little bit more labor to the client, really. It, but it's, for the most part, it it um, just basically just, you know, on the specs on that, it was shown for one side. But then also, something I didn't have... Uh, didn't put together. So this is one that I edited. I know it's not. Can I step up there and just do a quick sure. run by? Yeah. So this one, so on the photo that you guys have, the wall doesn't go all the way down to the ground. That wall doesn't go all. I got about maybe a sheet and a half distance between the ground. And that, that's just what we designed with the client and I. I guess he wanted a little spot for Breeze to come through or whatever else. I read talking to Javier, it sounded like that we had to come all the way to the ground with that. So I did change that. I just didn't change the packet. I did this update since then. So we could come all the way to the ground with that. That's no problem at all. We were actually already ordered the sheet metal enough to do that. Um, basically, so it's... And that's also that, that turquoise green, I mean that turquoise blue is also that, the, just to show you that gypsum board in between, just kind of give you a rough idea of what's going on there. Okay. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Can, I, Can I say one more thing? I'm going to close the public okay. hearing, and then we're going to go into staff and um, committee discussion. Public hearing is now closed. Um, we're going to have discussion of the variance application among the board officers. Um, I mean, yeah, board members. Javier? I do see one more thing that might become an issue. Is, uh, it, it shows it like coming up on that window. It could take away from the egress of, the, of that bedroom. To the coming in, if you see the window where it comes up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just showing it lower, it could be higher, but in the picture it does show that's taking away the, a little bit of the eager side of that window. Thank you. Yep. Tom, did you have some things you wanted to say? I just, I, I agree with what you're saying. Why would you want to cut the window in half? Mm -hmm. you should, it should at least be that high, but I... Mm -hmm. I mean, come up higher if need be. Um, I guess my comment is that does the shed next door be code? Pre existing non conforming. Thank you. There we go. Well, no question. Yeah. 
Um, sir? Yeah. Um, you're, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is true, but you're proposing the, the front end and the back end is open, correct? Yeah, that's, so that's what the client not, wanted. Yeah. Pardon me? Yeah, that's what the client wanted. But if okay. we need to change that, we can too. Will that, will that funky shed in back remain there? Um, you know, at the end of the drive, and the end of that driveway, there's a shed there. There is a little shed there. Yeah, that was he was wanting to hope that was going to say. There's a walkway. There's about a four foot walkway between that shed and the house, mm -hmm. and so he was wanting to keep that there. Um, that that's a very good point. That little, it's a wooden shed back there. So he wanted to keep that there, and basically there's a four foot on the right side of that shed between the sh that little mini wood shed and the house to be able to walk through between the two. So yeah, that shed that's already there is already on that property line existing anyways, yeah. Okay. Yes, of course. So following up with what Fred was pointing out is um, since this carport, this proposed carport is going to be open, then for fire access, you're going to be able to go through that and then go through this, that, it's actually that narrow space, four foot, four foot of, um, by the, um, the tool shed in the back, the storage shed in the back, that's, that's a pinch point, but it seems that if it's open on both ends and you have the access to get through there. For a hose to go, that's my, what's been in my question. Yeah, it's just, hose. as a firefighter, just to drive a hose through, but then you have no, then you're in a in an area that if it blows out of a window, you're trapped. You you need sc through the sky in order. That's why there's five feet to the side is so that you can fight the fire to stop it from running next door, and that you have a way to ingress and regress without something over the top of you that can trap you inside. So that's really the, you know, it, there could be a car in there. I mean, how are you going to get by with a car in there, and and it's catching on fire or whatever. So those distances around the house is so that you can sort of surround and ground it. Just to be able to say, oh, I can run through there with a hose and fight it from the back, or you can fight it from the back from the other side. But, but if it's coming, blowing out of the windows that are on that side, you've got to have that area. So that's my experience is, is I've been in some tight pinch points like that, and it's really, really dangerous, and you don't even want to go there. So that's all. I, no, right. um, yeah, I took a, a drive up and down Briggs, and, and I think how he's correct, there's a lot of non-conforming, or this gentleman knows, there's a lot of non-conforming sheds there, and you can see right there, <laughs> right next to it, it's, it's a real drag, and there, there happens to be a concrete thing there. Um, I, I, I tend to think myself that this is okay, mm -hmm. even given what, you, what the, the mayor has said. Anyone else have any comments here on the? Well, I, I, when you say, when you say, well, you know, it's, it's like this up and down the street, so what you, it's like, let's just spread it around a little bit further. I mean, the key that we'll, we would hopefully do is make the neighborhoods better. Yes. Well, she's Personally, the, excuse me, yes. Hi. Well, she's the one to speak. I actually see this as an improvement to that problem of that shed above against that property line. To me, it's an eyesore as is, an invitation for kids to be climbing up and playing on the roof of that shed. I mean, it's a danger point to me, so blocking that off from access you know, if there's a child living in this house, trust me, they're on that roof of that shed. So to me, to block off that access is a, is a, it's not only looks better, but it might be safer. You could do that with a fence. You could do that with a fence. But that was a concern. Yeah. I, I mean, the, 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 the comment I think I want to make is, <laughs> well, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. Is that what you're talking about? Chain link? Is that what you're No, because a kid climbs a chain link. So a wood fence is even a worse structure to have there than what he's proposing metal and, and gypsum. Oh, that's, that's not the issue. Or maybe before, it's not so the issue, yeah. yeah. It, could be, it could be a concrete wall, I guess. But I want to just yeah. 
<coughs> remember that our, our job here is to um, make sure there's a reason for the variance. I'm not saying there is or there isn't, but I need, you know, in order to grant a variance, there has to be spe special circumstances. And this is self-imposed. And this is self, thank you, this is self-imposed. One of the problems with trying to see what's around the, the area, a lot of non-conforming stuff, I fully agree with that. I went yeah. down there and went, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> because they didn't get a permit, they didn't go through the proper channels mm -hmm. back when. However, if you grant this variance, now that goes in record as then the next person can say, well, you gave a variance to this one, so I should be able to do it too. So that is a precedence that's being set that we deal with in the DRB and many things is what happens the next time, not necessarily just this time. That's and what my, I would like to do. My more. issue is that the shed, I mean, it was grandfathered in, and that's a shame that too. And that, that, that without that there, we wouldn't have a problem. Well, you know, if you, did he say, yes. did the principal want to keep the, the yeah, I think you said wanted to keep the shed, but do you have to keep it? The you little, can the little shed, shed, no, it's, you're talking about two different sheds. Two sheds. Yeah, I know, I know, this but I'm one, saying, that one, if keep. that one was gone, it would give a clear through. Well, he's still not going to mitigate so, this um, issue right here. I don't know what you can do. It's there. Well, let me talk about a semantic issue here. The zoning code states that accessory buildings should not be constructed. This clearly is not a building. So I think that given a close reading of that, that this would can be allowable. We can we can vote to make an exception for this because I don't think that the carport on the side is covered in these regulations. A building is. In a building, to me, four walls and a, a roof. So I think just technically, that, that maybe you want to close that loophole, but but as it exists now, it's not a building. Uh, <coughs> and uh, no, I don't know. I mean, we can certainly recommend uh, uh, approving this if he removes that shed in back. If people think that that's a problem. It doesn't just say buildings, it says private garages and carports. No, no, no. Private garages and carports shall not be constructed closer to the front line lot. It doesn't say anything about the side. Cato? I'd also just like to comment that um, a car can certainly be parked right there, whether or not there's a carport. So that would stop the firefighters from being able to access that area, whether there was a carport there or not. So the, the, in a way, the carport doesn't obstruct, obstruct the um, firefighters from getting back there. Except the fact they're underneath a, a an awning. An awning, right. Yeah. Now, what would, um, would there be a difference if the side was not there? But I, I like the side because if it's a fire, one hour fire resistant material, then it's, to it's me the, it's it actually overhead. seems like it's protecting this um, property from the shed that's right on the property line. So it's protecting it from a fire, uh, possible fire. Um, Is the you know, issue that it's, oh, that, it's, that it's closed overhead, that's really the issue? Can can some of the overhead panels not? Can it be open air? And I don't believe that that's Still. the issue we're looking at. We're looking at the property line. Well, we don't want to engage in a yeah. conversation right. back and forth. Right. Yeah. We're, we're away from it. But I do agree with um, the reading that uh, Fred points out, and that this is not an accessory building. Um, and right in that. 6.3.1D specifically says that the carports uh, should not be constructed closer to the front line, but it doesn't say closer to five feet to the side of the rear lot line. I disagree. I interpret it as an accessory building being a private garage and a carport and an ADU or anything else. That's how I interpret it. We might they all interpret it differently. Mm -hmm. So why would they separate out accessory building uh, and private garage? Because you're allowed to build a carport in a private garage in front of your house. Mm -hmm. so, okay. mm -hmm. But the 
sites have they're that. They're still staying in Warren, maybe not in Old Bisbee. You can't build between the street and the, the main structure. Old Bisbee's different as far as setbacks. Yeah, no. Well, I know about setbacks, but what you can build in front of the house, from the street to the house, I mean, it, now that would be an ice work. What, how would you define accessory building out here? I would say any shed, any parkour, any fire garage, any ADU, any Ramada, uh, gazebo, anything to that, to that sort, I would consider that. Uh, and it requires a building permit. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, and anything cannot be against the lot line. It strictly says that it's only it has to have a five foot setback. I don't, there's usually a definition of, but I don't have that. I don't have that for you. You have the entire definition of what yeah, yeah. in front of it each one. I didn't have I didn't have that either. There's definitions of what accessory building is. I, we don't we don't we there's always a set of definitions in front of every code, right? Correct. You happen to and know. If that you guys looked on page um, I don't know what it is, but a zoning code page twenty, if you look under table five point two R zone regulations and you look at the site setback minimums, it's five feet. Five point so five point. It's, it's not. I, it's not excluding. It's, it says everything. There to me that there's a five foot setback. Yeah. Anything. Five foot side to side and ten foot back. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Is there any further discussion? Are we ready for a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Um, I move we approve the variance. Is yes. there a second? I second that. Uh, roll call. All in favor say aye. Aye. I'm going to do a roll call. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't say that right. <laughs> I was just, sorry. No, no, no. You said roll call. And I, I, I've attended so many meetings lately. Everybody is. Do I say yes? Do I say aye? Do I say? Well, you know, so I was trying yeah, to just hear. say it. Everybody in favor say aye. Everybody opposed say motion. Boy, well, that means you'd say aye again. Yeah. <laughs> you did that every single time. All right. So restate the motion for me quickly, just so we make just, sure. Um, I move that we approve the variance under consideration. All right. Uh, Cato? Nay. Melissa? Nay. Fred? Aye. Tom? Patterson? Um, no. Sharon? Aye. Three nays and two ayes. The motion does not pass. Well, two ayes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now you need a motion to deny. Yes, I do. Okay. You don't want to see if that carries. <laughs> I mean, if you don't approve the variance, well, why do you need a denial? Yeah. So it's you just don't approve record. it. So yeah, so it's on the record. It's on the record. It didn't get approved. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to call uh, the next motion. Would anybody like to make it? If not, I can do that. I move we adjourn. Is that what we're doing? We're going to have a motion to deny the variance. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. I think yes, we did, but we're going to do a second motion and take a second roll call. With this was approval. We're also going to do a motion to deny. Okay. I make a motion to deny the. Uh, and then we got to approve the denial. And I will second that motion. And again, we'll be going for it. This is to deny. Cato? A. Aye. Aye. Melissa? Aye. Um, Fred Miller? Abstain. Abstain. It's unclear. All right. That's Tom right. Patterson? <laughs> abstain. All right. Sharon? Yep. I abstain. I don't understand. Okay. All right, so we don't have that motion, so the other motion will stand, correct? What's that? Well, the, the variance was denied. The variance has so been denied. So you don't have to have a separate motion to deny the denial. I mean, 
You, you, have to, you have to have an out, ultimate outcome. And so yeah. since the first one didn't, didn't pass, you have to have an outcome which is... But the first one did pass to deny the variance. Right. right. Well, no, not, no, the, no, the first one... It was, it was to approve the variance, approve and, that was, and that was denied. Right. So now you still have the variance in front of you because there's been no decision. There's so no now you, have, you, you just did one to deny, and it was unanimous. And then you can work with... So it passed. You can work with staff to see if you can come up with a solution. Yeah. Well, I mean, we had three abstentions. And that's all... Every abstention is an I. Under our... Our code on an abstention is considered an I. Well, what's the point of an abstention then? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but that's the way our, our our charter and so on says. I, as a council member, anyone that votes votes that way, it's it, it says in our code or in our our charter, it's an I. There is I there like is no abstention, huh. or else you can't have a vote because because well, it no, doesn't you, count. That's, yeah, that's true, but an abstention is just someone that... I mean, that's well, I'm just telling you what our, what our, what our city code is, our city well, know, charter I, is, well, and an abstention is an I. Right. Let, me, let me make yeah. a, a point of discussion sure. to the members. Would we like to redo a motion so that we have the clarity? Yes. We want the first motion to stand, which was a denial of the merits. Or, we weren't granting. That does stand because that's it does stand because that's. that's uh, but I'm, I'm asking I, the board. I, if no, you... I don't want to withdraw that motion. Okay, thank you. That's the word I have to put stumbling. Okay, so so we have passed that. We have denied this. Yeah. That's it. We're, we're not that's granting the variance. Be, yeah, I mean we have not granted the variance, so there should be no other motion necessary. I mean you you're saying that there is, but I don't see why there is. Well, if someone says, I'm applying for this, we're not approving it. I mean, it seems to be why you have to have another motion to... To help clarify the reason that the that, that okay. pass, I make a motion that this, this passes, that it didn't, to help clarify it would be to have another motion to say I deny it, then it's done. I'm sorry, but all abstentions are considered an I. Well, then we're not talking about that. We're talking about well, that that seems seem one hmm. motion. Anyway, the motion's the motion's been had and voted, so well, it's so well. The second the second yeah. motion is then carried. Then yeah. Okay. So there's, right. yeah, we're and it's, not it's dancing on the head of a pin here. Yeah. And Mr. Mayor, you are not part of the committee. I want to be so clear. Just I am. I am the lazy on the. You are, but you're not a voting member. Exactly, but I get to give you. Uh, my best what if, what if so, recognized by the chair. Right. Okay, yeah. so the chair <laughs> motions I Yes, I'm I'm happy to recognize you. Oh. I motion I move that we adjourn. Is there a second? Yeah. We're adjourned. Okay. From here on forward you don't really need to make a motion to adjourn. I just cleared that up with my city attorney. Wow. So, so really? actually, all you have to do is say there's nothing else before us, and the chairman can adjourn. Oh, really? Well, well we like to, I, we like to <laughs> I just found that out. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it wrong for four years. No, <laughs> you can do it that way, but you can also.